Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Notes on Nonsense, the weekly pontification of your host, Meredith Atwood, on the same 24 hours podcast. This episode contains bad language. So there you go. Don't listen while your kids are in the car, or if you're like us, a kind of Osborne family, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So there you go. Notes on Nonsense was developed out of the premise of my new book, The Year of No Nonsense, and how can we go into our best year ever, no matter what time of the calendar year it is. So right now, you are headed into your year of no nonsense if you are ready. So my new book, The Year of No Nonsense, comes out December 17th. You can get your pre-order now, and with that pre-order, you get the first introduction and chapter one immediately, which is pretty cool. And you get a 20 minute video bonus guide for how to read the book. So check it out. Year of No Nonsense. You can go to my website and there's a link for the pre-order and also in the show notes. So let's get started with this week's Notes on Nonsense. Today's episode is Destinations Are Bullshit. And you probably know where I'm going with this. So let's get started. Destinations are bullshit. Here's the thing. We are very inclined to set a goal, set a number, set a weight, a barometer of some sort of destination with our life, with our health, with something that cannot technically be a destination. And here's what I mean. When I weigh a certain amount, then I will be happy. When I wear a certain size jeans, then I will be happy. When I get that job, when I hit this salary, when I meet this person, then I will be happy. Destinations are bullshit, you guys. Yes, it's great to have goals. Goals are super. I'm a big fan. But living our lives as if the destination, when reached, will be the end-all be-all of all things our happiness, our self-worth, our desire and acceptance of ourselves. Destinations are bullshit. You know why? Because there's no guarantee that we'll ever get there. And I actually think that destinations are excuses. I think when we set goals and we set them so far off in advance or something that's so unrealistic or feels like perfection, then we're setting ourselves up for failure in a way. Not to say you can't achieve amazing goals. I have seen people go from, you know, 300 pounds to a bodybuilding competition. I have seen people get off the couch and do amazing feats with their bodies. That's not impossible. But how often do we set a destination goal that is so great, it's so overwhelming, that we'll never get there, not in our current mental state? And therefore, when we take the first action, whether that's going to the gym or, you know, going grocery shopping, doing something that is in furtherance of that destination, that goal, we do the thing for one day, two days, five days, and then we get on the scale or we look at our calendar and we say, oh, well, I'm just never going to get there. So screw it. I'm going to quit. And then becomes the cycle the self-hate cycle, the dialogue that goes on in our heads of, well, I never do anything that I set out to do. I'm such a loser. So-and-so can do it and I can't. And, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. Here we go again, again. And I'm not saying that setting goals is bad. Please don't tweet me about that. That's not the point. Goals are awesome when we learn to enjoy the journey of the goal. I often coach athletes who say they hate to train, but they love race day. And this is always a conundrum for me as a coach because I think, well, it's going to be a really long, long training cycle for Ironman when you hate to put in all the work. And I get that. Like some people love race day. For me, I always enjoyed training. I love the day-to-day process. And I don't know if it was always that way for me, but I know somewhere along the way, I really began to enjoy the process, whether it's running or swimming or weightlifting. I enjoy going to the gym. I enjoy the break from life that it affords me. I enjoy the process. I enjoy training and I always struggle. (laughs) So if you want me to coach you, do not in your application say, 
I really hate training and love race day because I'm probably going to pass. <laughs> and it's not to say that you're not being honest. I mean, I think that's really good. But my question for you is if the destination is the race, then what are you even doing preparing for the race? Like, how are you going to get through it? How are you going to survive when the destination is the only glory, the only thing that you're seeking? And that's not to say that all training for an event is super fun because I get that it's not. And you know, that can be applied to certain other areas of life. It's not like doing work every day is totally fun and and all the things we need to do is totally fun. That's not the point. But we have to learn to enjoy the process, no matter the outcome. And that's exceptionally difficult to do, especially in this results-oriented culture that we live in and the pressure that we put on ourselves to look a certain way, to achieve a certain level, to have status, to finish races. All of these things we are very driven by in our culture. Before you set your next goal, I want you to think about the journey to that goal. What does it look like? Is that something you can enjoy? Because if you don't really like to swim and bike and run, why are you doing it? Why are you signing up for triathlons? If you don't like to run, why are you signing up for races? If you hate lifting weights, then why are you going to the gym? The process has to be some sort of enjoyment along the way. You know why? Because one day we're going to reach the destination, the destination at the end of our lives. And when you look at your life like a race, If you don't enjoy the training along the way and you're just trying to get to that finish line, which is, I guess, death here, what's the point? I mean, you've heard it before. Life is a journey, not a destination. I agree. But I want to really think about that. I want you to really think about that in your day-to-day life. We're all like, yeah, 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 it's a destination. Or yeah, 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 it's a journey. I got it. I got it. Life is a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we put our blinders on, we put our heads down, and we plow forward toward the destination, whatever It is. And I hear it all the time. If I can just make it to the end of the month, if I can just make it to the end of the year, if I can just make it to the end of the week. Why? Why? What happens then? And say, for example, that you achieve all your goals. What if at the end of next year, you achieved all those goals? You got the promotion. You got the love. You got the body you wanted. Then what? Then what? I think some people have a fear of success just for the end of that question. Okay, so... I hit my body goal, then what? Then what do I do? Is that the end of life? (laughs) Do I have nothing else to shoot for? Do I have nothing else to scare me into working really hard? And that's the thing too, when you're focused on the destination, you tend to pick really big goals in hopes that you will scare yourself into submission. You will scare yourself into complying with the path for these goals. I used to register for races that way. If I sign up for something big enough, then I'll scare myself into eating correctly and working out harder. That never works, you guys. Not in an efficient way, not in an effective way that's going to sustain you through life, through health, and through your pursuit of happiness. It's going to scare you into potentially a goal. Sure, maybe you'll do it. But what's the point of that? Really ask yourself, what is the point of setting a goal so scary that it runs your life and your mental space and your head space and all the things in between that are helping you get there and you feel pressured and guilty when you don't do it? What is the point of living our day-to-day life with a destination in mind? It can be really, really harmful. And I'm having a hard time even recording this episode because I did bench press today and I can't even hold my arms up. (laughs) Not that that's relevant to anything, but I'm trying to hold my arms up to lean forward on this table and I am having a hard time doing it, speaking of destination. But I did a workout today that had no destination. I have no races planned. I have no goals for my fitness. I thought about doing a figure competition. I may still do that. But I pulled it off the table for the moment because I can't wrap my head around it. And it is a goal so scary that how do I even get there, right? So I pulled it off the table and just said, whatever. I'm just going to live my life. I'm going to enjoy each workout. I'm going to enjoy how each meal makes me feel. I'm just going to do life. The problem with making the decision to just show up and do life is a few things. When we decide we're going to live our lives, we have to also deal with our shit. When we are creating lots of destination type diversions, we don't have to deal with our shit. When we create massive goals, then we don't have to deal with what's right in front of us. We're always very future oriented. We're not living in the present. We're living in the future. We're living in the panic of training. We're living in the panic of pursuing a goal blindly pushing forward. We don't have to be present. We don't have to deal with our actual shit that is in front of us. So my challenge for you is if you are setting amazing goals. Again, I'm not I'm not crapping on goals here. But if you're setting goals for the sole purpose of achieving the goals, 
without any enjoyment of the process or any thought or planning for the process that it's going to take to achieve that goal. I want you to really think about that. And what impact does that have on your life? More importantly, if you're the type of person that's constantly setting a goal and in your mind, you're constantly failing by not achieving that goal. I want you to ask the question of why are you trying to achieve that particular goal? What is it about that goal that continues to have you quote unquote fail? I have a whole new episode planned for about about failure at some point, but you're not failing if you're setting a goal so big that you can't quite attain it right now. You're not failing if you're unable to enjoy the journey. You've just set the wrong goal. So when you think about the destination, the goal that you are setting, the things that you want at the end of your life, the things that you want five, 10 years from now, think about the process. Think about what it's going to take along that journey to achieve it and ask yourself if you want that. Do you want that journey? Do you want that day to day? Because if you don't enjoy the day to day that you're putting in, if you don't enjoy the journey, the destination will not be nearly as sweet as you think. It really won't. And chances are you may not reach it. And then you're just going to use it as evidence of why you fail. And let's not do that to ourselves, people. Let's not set ourselves up to prove some hypothesis that came along the way in our childhood that we are useless or never do anything or we aren't runners or we can't do something that someone said we couldn't someday. (laughs) Does that even make sense? A lot of times we set out to prove that we aren't something that someone said we were. Or we set out to prove that we can do something that someone else said we couldn't. And that is a perfectly good reason to chase a goal. But unless you're going to enjoy that process along the way and what it's going to take, unless you enjoy getting in the pool and getting on your bike and running and going to the gym or getting on the yoga mat or whatever it is you're doing, unless you find some enjoyment in it, there's no point in going forward. And this can apply to jobs and relationships and everything in your life. Yeah, if you hate your job, like truly, truly hate it every single day, you need to get out of it. Figure another way. There is always a way, you guys. There is. I promise you. There is always a way to do something differently. And I read in the Daily Stoic today for November 4th, and I'm not sure when I'll publish this particular episode, but today's was about change is neither good nor bad. And I thought about that for a minute, and I was like, huh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Because the Stoic said, basically, when you're presented with something, with a choice, with a position in life, Don't go, it's bad, or it's good. It just is. The way that we react to something is whether it determines if it's good or bad. And so being neutral with regard to change is pretty interesting. It's it's an interesting concept because I think some of us are very change averse. Some of us also jump from change to change to change like, you know, we're hopping from lily pads. And so if you're struggling with this destination idea and change on either end of the spectrum, Try to be change neutral as we go forward this week. That is my challenge for you. The challenge for you is to focus on the journey, not the destination. Have your destination goals, sure. But ask yourself, am I going to achieve these goals because I enjoy the journey? Or is there 0% chance that I am enjoying this journey enough to actually reach these goals? That is the challenge for this week. Thank you all for listening. Until next time.